So good morning, and thank you for inviting me to, to speak to you today. Uh, we're going to change the order a little bit, and we're going to have Teresa Bernstein come up and talk about her testimony on I-200 first, because what I have to sp uh, speak about actually dovetails and follows what Teresa is going to present first. And the agenda was right the first time, and Carl just kind of turned it around on us, but that's all right. Um, so Teresa, I want you to Good morning. Good morning. So again, I'm Teresa Burnson. I'm director of the Office of Minority and Women's Business Enterprises. All right, we are a small agency, 20 people strong here in Olympia. And as Mr. Jackson said, we were formed in 1983. Mm -hmm. And that's because the legislature found that minority and women-owned businesses have been denied equitable contracting opportunities mm -hmm. and were significantly underrepresented. Yeah, no money, no money. So my agency does a couple things. We certify that businesses are indeed owned and controlled by minority women. Then we work with the agencies along with uh, Director Liu to try to get them to increase their participation with African American and other minority owned firms. And then we count that percentage of spend that's been talked about this morning. So in that role, I was asked to give testimony in the Senate committee about the effects of I-200. Mm -hmm. So here's that testimony that I gave that Mr. Jackson referred to. So in the five years before the passage of I-200, the percentage of spend with certified firms was an average of 10%. Mm -hmm. Then I-200 passed. If that percentage of spend had remained at those levels prior to the passage of I-200 to this time, the minority and women-owned small business community would have received an additional $3.5 billion. Woo! What'd you say? So, as the governor stated, the level of spending that we're at, 3%, is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. The fact that African-American-owned firms get 4% of that 3% is not acceptable. Right? So, Chris Liu will uh, outline some of the efforts of the state um, to address that issue, and I can tell you that I, as a director of the Office of Minority and Women's Business Enterprises, am committing to dealing with this issue. Thank you. Thank you. So before I start, I want to give you my, my contact information. So if you have a question that you're not able to ask today, or if you want me to come and speak to a gathering that you're having, you can get a hold of me. My telephone number is area code 360-407-9201. And more than likely, my assistant, Lindsay Aldridge, will pick up the phone. But she always knows where to find me because I actually don't have an office. I'm either out in the field or I'm sitting with my employees or I'm in some committee meeting. So I don't have a physical office. I work mobily and as uh, you heard, uh, I, I attend a lot of meetings. So I want to talk to you about two things. Well, the first thing I want to talk to you about is money, and that's going to be my theme today. And two things within the money is, one is the disparity study. Why the hell do we need to have a disparity study? Right? We already know there's disparity out there. Right? We already see it out there. We know it exists. But we want that to stand up in court because we are going to get challenged if we decide to set mandatory goals. Yes, right. You have to have a disparity study. And even if we didn't have I-200, you would still need a disparity study. So the governor who just left the room agreed to pay for this disparity study. I couldn't have done this without, and Teresa couldn't have done this, without the governor's support and the legislator's support to pass the money for the, for the disparity study. Now, we're basically uh, halfway through the disparity study, maybe a little bit further than halfway through the uh, disparity study, and we expect to have it out in early um, 2019. In, the, in January, I think, is when it's scheduled to be released. Teresa's shaking her head, yes, and she knows as much about it as, as I do. We have a very, very good committee working on this. They're the six top agencies within the state. Department of Transportation, the Healthcare Authority, DSHS, and everybody knows how big DSHS is. Uh, Department of Corrections, and I'm leaving out two agencies, but they're all the big agencies. 
why are only these six eight big agencies involved besides the minority commissions? It's because that's where two-thirds of the money is spent. So if you want to go solve a problem, you go follow the money. Mm -hmm. That's basically it, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So we're following the money, and each of the directors who are going to be coming forward today to speak to you, especially the Department of Transportation, is doing great work within the sub-cabinet and within their own agencies. The sub-cabinet is there only to coordinate the activities and to put together what we're calling the community of practice. Mm -hmm. What is the community of practice? It's where we share what we are doing and what we are being successful at, and also sharing what we're not being successful at. And this is really, really important because if we start to set goals, we have to prove that we had voluntary effort first. So if you read the law and you follow the Ninth Circuit Court, that is one of the requirements for us to be able to set mandatory goals is did you have voluntary uh, um, voluntary goals first and were you able to meet those. So some, some early experiments within the Department of Enterprise Services, the agency I run, is we run most of the public works that is not DOT related. So these are buildings and, and purchasing of, of, of various contracts. We do some of the contracting for higher debt also. In our voluntary state, we have roughly between 22 and 24% participation. So we have shown that an inclusion plan can work, but we don't have the numbers within that inclusion quite right yet, so we're continuing to massage that. So there's some early hope there. Um, I don't want to carry on too, too, far, too much further because I know I could talk about this for like the next two hours. Um, but some of the things are working. Roger Millar, uh, when he comes up uh, uh, later on this morning, he has some wonderful things to tell you about the efforts that DOT is making. Stephen Sinclair from the Department of Corrections also has some great things that they're working on also. I want to tell you that we're not being 100% successful because at the base of this, the antithesis of what we're doing is training our employees and inspiring our employees to do the right thing. All right. That's what we're doing. So all these things that Teresa and I are doing don't mean a, a darn thing unless we train our employees to do exactly the same thing and lead the way. Yes. So yes. if you have any questions for me, please feel free to use the phone, uh, the phone number. And if, you, uh, if I can pick up your phone call, I do pledge to return your, your phone call within 24 hours after receiving it if I'm actually in the state. So please feel free to use the phone. Thank you. Any index? Any questions? Yeah, here he is here. Here.